we are doing criminal justice reform today. So um, just wondering, first and foremost, how did you come up with this idea? Well, you know, ever since I got elected, uh, as a businessman, when I first got elected, when I started running for office, I realized Oklahoma was last place in incarceration rates. So that means we incarcerated more men and women than every other state, and I just knew that wasn't right. Um, so I wanted to just kind of start looking at our policies. Um, we have 5,000 fewer people incarcerated today in Oklahoma than when I took over in 2019. So it's just amazing what we've done. We've closed four private prisons, or two private prisons, two other prisons, so four total prisons, saving the taxpayer hundreds of millions of dollars. And now we're number two in the nation in the lowest recidivism rate. So that's people going back into prison. We're like number two in the entire country. And so, again, I, I brought all the, the law enforcement and the judges, the public defenders, everybody to the table, first time ever that all three branches of government have come together to create this task force to really study this. What does it look like uh, to have the most law and order state? And at the same time, how do we get people back into the workforce and how do we rehabilitate people that have made a mistake years ago uh, and make sure they have second chances as well? And I'm wondering what are your key issues? I know it's gonna come out in the task force, but what are um, some issues that you think we could get right on right now? Well, I, I think uh, like what is a violent, nonviolent crime? How do we make sure that the punishment is fair across every single different county across the state? Like what is the, sometimes, you know, there's such a wide range of punishments. It could be 30 years or it could be two years. Well, for most of us, that's kind of weird. If it's the same crime, shouldn't it, if it's worth five years, let's make sure they spend five years in prison. If it's a 10 year crime, let's make sure they spend 10 years. But don't give somebody 30 years and give somebody six months. Uh, that seems kind of weird. So we want to we want to kind of bring those ranges down a little bit. Um, we also want to talk about mental health and what's happening with the homeless. Um, how do we make sure that we're number one in the country in recidivism? How do we make sure that uh, we're at least let's move to 25th in incarceration rates? That means we'll we'll save the taxpayers more money and we'll get more people into the workforce and we'll make sure that we have fewer kids in DHS custody. So all this stuff works together, and I'm just trying to get the thought leaders across everybody that touches the criminal justice system to come together to kind of think about what is possible, what does the next 20 years in Oklahoma look like. And kind of going off that a little bit, my, it's my understanding that there's DAs, sheriffs, but then there's also um, mental health advocates, substance abuse advocates, victim advocates as well. So you kind of have a full range of people that you're looking for on this. Can you kind of tell me about balancing the different perspectives of criminal justice? Sure. Uh, you know, when I first came into office, sometimes, um, you know, not to be critical of, of, of the previous stuff, but uh, it, it was almost just too heavy on law enforcement and what was good for law enforcement. And so we have to be a law and order state, but at the same time, we need to have mental health experts in the, in the conversation. We need to have judges in the conversation. We need the district attorneys. Uh, we need to have the public defenders. We need to have all those folks at the table talking about how do we move our state forward? And so I think that's why I, I have such a full list of people on this executive order to try to come together to come up with the best solution uh, for Oklahoma. It's not one group uh, has all the answers and we need to um, you know, invite conversations and some dissenting viewpoints. And in my team, in, in, my, in my governor meetings, um, I tell people if we're all thinking the same way, nobody's thinking. Uh, so we've got to have all these different points of view and that's the great thing about Oklahoma and, and when I can facilitate and bring more groups together, uh, that's my job as governor is get everybody kind of thinking about how do we solve this problem for, for the taxpayer and also for public safety and how do we solve this for folks that maybe have an addiction problem as well. And I think that's interesting that you brought up. Um, I think in the previous administration, um, Fallon had a task force in 2016 that was kind of similar for criminal justice reform. Is there anything that you're doing similar to that or is it completely different than that? Well, you know, there's been a, ever since I, got, I took over, I've tried to figure out how do we get, um, you know, change in the legislation and how do we get, uh, Texas went through this and they classified what is a violent and a nonviolent crime. And so I've been trying to get some of this across the finish line, but it's hard, change is hard. And if you don't get all the groups together at the table, uh, it, it's hard to get you know, change across the finish line with the legislature. And so I'm not sure exactly what uh, her intent was when she, when she did that executive order uh, when she was in office, but 
I think we're doing it the right way, and, and I'm very optimistic that by bringing the groups together uh, from, the, uh, from the court system, from the district attorneys, from the uh, mental health groups, that we can come up with some great solutions to move our state forward in a positive direction. And then one of the bills you vetoed this session had to do with mental health um, treatment in jails and competency for hearings. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering, you said at the time in your veto message that you liked the intention, but it was the wrong solution. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, basically, uh, so the mental health folks told me that that's not the right thing. We need actual professionals to, um, to look and see if someone's competent, and I didn't want to do that. I thought that was a mistake to do that in the county jails, that we need to send them to more of a professional. And so that's the reason that I think we need to really look at that, that uh, issue and not just push that back on the county jails to make those determinations. We have a system set up, and, uh, and that, I thought that was too big of a change at this point. And then the process of this, so all these people will come together, right, and um, they'll make recommendations to the legislature. Is that what your expectation of this? Are there meetings in between with you, or how is that going to work? Yeah, no, they'll have, uh, I don't know exactly how many meetings, meetings they're going to have. They'll have the first meeting will be a public meeting, and then they'll have like four or five or six private meetings. They'll have another public meeting, and then they'll issue a report to the citizens of Oklahoma and the legislature and myself and with their recommendations on policy changes that can move our state forward uh, to you know, reduce, reduce uh, uh, incarceration numbers, to protect public safety, to address addiction and mental health issues, and, and how do we handle that when a police officer arrests someone uh, with a mental health episode. So all those things work together and we're looking forward to getting their report back uh, from all the different stakeholders around this public safety uh, issue in the state of Oklahoma. Last question for you, one goal from this. If there's one thing that comes out of this um, task force, what, what would it be? You know, it's, uh, it's always, to me, it's always, it's kind of two things. It's safer communities and, you know, safer communities and then protecting the taxpayers and giving people second chances. So all three of those things kind of work together. And I think they're in that order. You always, we all want the same thing. We all want to make sure we have safe communities, number one, and we're going to do that in Oklahoma. But at the same time, I don't think we have to be 47th in the country in incarceration rates uh, to have the safest communities. We have some addiction, we have some, some programs that we've started since I've been in office. One of them is called the Sarah Stitt Act, and it's actually bringing services behind the wire before people get released to give them a driver's license and the ability to go get a job or get further their education uh, before they even actually get released from prison. So uh, all those, uh, uh, those diversion programs are, I think, are important conversation as well. Perfect. Anything that I missed that you would like to add or We're, you're like, oh, she should have asked me this? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay.